Okay, types of materials that the darbuka comes in. So the darbuka can be made out of many things. Three things in particular. We touched on them at the beginning of this course. Either metal, either wood, or either clay. Let's start with wood. Wood darbukas are archaic. We don't use them anymore. We don't use wood darbukas. Wood darbukas are pretty rubbish. Uh, you will find them sometimes if you're walking down the streets in Cairo, in the marketplaces, and you find in like a souk or something, you find a, a wood darbuka for sale there. They're rubbish. They're terrible. Don't use them. Don't buy them. I don't like them. We don't use wood darbukas. If you speak to any proper darbuka player, they will tell you that wood darbukas are not used. If you show up to a gig with a wooden darbuka, you will be laughed at. So do not use a wooden darbuka. It is a bad idea. Next, we have clay darbukas. Clay darbukas are fantastic. They are amazing. I really like clay darbukas. I have a clay darbuka myself. It's the one that I had made in Serbia. It is amazing. It's an awesome darbuka. Clay darbukas are very, very traditional, right? They have the traditional desert sound to them. But this is actually also where they are a little bit difficult for beginners to use. So when you have a clay darbuka, with a clay darbuka, first of all, first of all, it, rely, it relies on a natural leather skin, right? And if you are in the desert, a natural leather skin is fine because the humidity is such that the skin will remain tight, i.e. in the desert, it is hot and it is dry. So the natural leather skin is going to be tight. Because the natural leather skin is tight, right, the darbuka can play very easily, right? It plays very nicely. You hit the tuck sound, it makes a nice ringing tuck. It's a really nice sound. Unfortunately, most of us don't live in deserts. Actually, fortunately, fortunately, most of us don't live in deserts. I'm actually very happy that I live in London and not in a desert. Anyway, because we don't live in deserts, we don't have that same humidity level, right? So what happens is, if you are in London, for example, where a lot of the times it's wet, the darbuka will come as uh, it will become flat, right? The skin will become flat. What will happen is because it's not humid enough, uh, because the humidity is wrong, sorry, because it's too humid and uh, the, there's a lot of moisture in the air, then the darbuka will become very kind of, um, you can push into the skin and it creates a very kind of wobbly sound and it's not good. You want a sharp, strong sound for the darbuka. You don't want a wobbly sound for your darbuka. So it creates an unstable, uneven, wobbly kind of sound. We can fix this by putting a lighting mechanism inside the darbuka. So we put a light inside the darbuka, the light creates heat, the heat heats up the skin, dries up the moisture, makes the skin nice and tight, right? This is a common thing that we do to adjust the uh, sharpness and the tightness of the skin. Now, it is an additional thing to bear in mind when you're a beginner. And so as a beginner, I would recommend to not use a clay darbuka and to use a metal darbuka instead. Another difficulty with the clay darbukas is they are, first of all, very expensive and secondly, very brittle, right? So expensive, yes, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if you paid, you know, at least $500 for a clay darbuka. It's a very, uh, it's an inexpensive item. And and, uh, and they are, they are, that's not unreasonable. $500 is not unreasonable for a clay darbuka. So you're paying $500 for your darbuka. Then you have your darbuka and it is very brittle. It's very easy to, to crack, easy to break, right? If you drop it, it will crack. And if it cracks, there's no coming back from that. I was actually speaking um, a couple of years back, there was a, a concert in London and I was speaking to the percussionist there who was playing a dohola. And I said to him, uh, he was playing a Remo, um, a Remo djembe. And I knew he was a dohola player. So I said, how come you're playing a Remo djembe and not a dohola? And he said, uh, he said, I used to have a dohola, but I couldn't travel with it. He was from Granada in Spain. He said, I couldn't travel with it. I used to travel with a dohola. And what happened was, he said he, he put it in the cargo hold on the plane. And when it came out of the cargo of the plane, he could see that the shape had collapsed. He could see that it had been damaged, it hit something, and the darbuka was broken. And so I said, you know, that's very sad. And he said, yeah, he said, you know, there's no fixing it and they're very expensive to replace. And so it's another thing to bear in mind that if you're moving your darbuka around a lot and it's made of clay, it might break. And if it breaks, that's going to be an issue for you. Another thing about the clay darbuka is the clay darbuka has had a recent revival, a recent kind of... Um, 
a revival of how it's used and how it's used in practice by uh, Mr. Ali Ahmed in Turkey. So what happened was Mr. Ali Ahmed created a new style of playing darbuka, the Turkish split hand style of playing darbuka, where they use more than one finger, more than two fingers of their hand, and they make this amazing sequence of rolls and and beautiful, beautiful uh, combinations and sequences with their darbuka. And Mr. Ali Ahmed really redefined the clay darbuka. So all of this Turkish split hand technique is best played on a clay darbuka. And so if you have a clay darbuka, it's uh, it's perfect for learning those kinds of things. When I was learning Turkish split hand technique, I would practice on my clay darbuka. Much easier to practice on than my metal darbuka. And uh, and and this is another element where it comes back to for beginners, it's best for beginners to stay with the um, with the normal kind of metal darbuka because that's where they will do most of their learning and that's where most of the basic techniques are easily mastered. On a clay darbuka, yeah, you can learn Turkish split hand technique, but I wouldn't recommend learning Turkish split hand technique until you've mastered the basics. So master the basics first on a metal darbuka, get a metal darbuka, not a clay darbuka for the time being. Then once you kind of progressed, a clay is uh, a clay darbuka is amazing. Let's talk about metal darbukas. Metal darbukas such as the standard Egyptian darbuka, the standard Egyptian darbuka. Metal darbukas are really common. They're very popular and they are amazing sounding instruments. Metal darbukas make sharp, powerful tech strokes sharp powerful uh, car strokes, deep powerful doom strokes, bassy doom strokes and they're easy to transport, easy to play, easy to purchase Everything is good about a metal darbuka. On top of that, because the skin is made of plastic and is joined to the metal body by bolts, you can tune the bolts to adjust the tension of the darbuka, which means that, and also they don't go out of tune very easily, which means that if you rock up to a gig and you have your darbuka with you, you know it's gonna sound good because you've just tuned it and it's not gonna go out of tune. It's not gonna change with the weather, with the humidity. It's gonna sound perfectly fine. So a metal darbuka is the way to go for beginners. The only differentiation within the metal darbuka category is in the metal darbuka category, you have uh, Turkish darbukas and you have Egyptian darbukas. The Egyptian style darbuka is also the same style that's used in uh, in Eastern Europe and in Southeast Asia. So the Egyptian style darbukas, they are rounded at the top. They have a rounded shape and they come down like this. Whereas the Turkish flat head darbukas, they have a flat head. The head is flat and it comes down at sharp, the sharp sides that come down. I'll put a picture up with some video trickery. It should be on my left side, um, or maybe my right side. But the Turkish darbuka has a flat head and it comes down and it makes the goblet shape in that sense. The Turkish flat head darbukas are great for Turkish style playing. Most of us, we'll learn Arabic style playing first. Especially in this course, I will teach you Arabic style playing before we look at any Turkish style techniques. We will look at some Turkish style techniques very much later down the line, but for the time being, we're looking at Arabic style techniques, Arabic style darbuka. And so the Arabic style darbuka, Arabic metal darbuka is the best darbuka for you to have at this point. I personally don't like the Turkish flathead darbukas. They're not my style. Uh, if you play fast, uh, sometimes I, when I was practicing, uh, not anymore, but when I was practicing, I used to hurt my hands on them because of the sharp edges. Um, and and, uh, and yeah, I just don't really like their style. I prefer Egyptian metal darbukas, and that's the style I like to teach. But if you were in Turkey and you were learning a lot of split hand technique, a lot of Turkish technique, a flat head darbuka might be perfect for you. But that's the only really real differentiation between the metal darbukas.